Behind me is my bridge with the forms removed. Almost done. Still green. I have to do a final coat. It'll be a bright white on the cement and the post will be a cedar red. And I think that that will look really good. So let me do a quick video on removing the forms and show you how I got here. Well, hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So the project of the month is still the bridge. Now that bridge just represents my roof. So you see a bridge, but I actually see a laboratory that's going to be used for testing everything related to my bridge. So real quick running through all the things that it's experiment. So I have earth bag there. I have hyper adobe there. I have mortar here and I'm using concrete there for stucco. On the bridge itself, I have three different, uh, four different zones. I have a zone of all pure concrete. I have a zone of, of uh, one bag of concrete to two bags of stucco for here. I have a 50-50 stucco mix. And then lastly, I have a half and half stucco and concrete. Now the bridge I wanted, uh, you know, to last a thousand years and it'll get foot traffic and whatnot, but a roof doesn't get foot traffic. A roof will just be more static. So in each spot of the bridge, you'll notice that there's circles. These circles are to test the wearability of um, lightweight concrete. Half of the holes will be filled with various formulas of styrofoam concrete. Half of them will be filled with perlite. Now, I've kind of already decided against perlite, not because technically it's not superior. It is. Uh, it reflects heat out, which is something that I'd like. Simply, I don't have a perlite mine around here, so it's very expensive. Where um, styrofoam, I can still get for free. It's harder. You used to be able to get it easier. Uh, now it is feeding back in the recycle uh, loop pretty well because there's money to be found. But um, anyway, I'm still getting styrofoam for free. So today's day uh, job, and I do apologize, there's high winds out. I'm about uh, 70 hours away from a massive winter storm. I'm just trying to get things done before it shows up and it gets too cold and unfun uh, to do work. So today we'll be pulling off all the molds and forms and I didn't put on any of the forms, I didn't put uh, oil. So I should have sprayed them all with uh, oh, used motor oil, which I did have. I just, <laughs> you know, there's more, there's just more things to do than there's time to do it when you're a solo builder. So on the top of it, you'll notice that I've got the one decorative sconce. You know, these are not, um, these are not cast iron. They're not super expensive. They're aluminum, but painted aluminum, I'm going to last, will, uh, guess will last a thousand years. Longer than the post will. So anyway, uh, I'm going to cut all the tops of the post today. Just get uh, ready for the cosmetic. If I have time, I'll run to town and I'll get pure Portland cement and I'll uh, start making different mixes of, of um, lightweight concrete for the testing. And then lastly, if I get a lot of time, let's say I'm, I'm super fast and I get it all done, I will um, stucco that side uh, of the earth bag and start doing the uh, stonework on top. The bridge itself will have uh, stepping stones that'll come out in a fan pattern on both sides and I'll raise the dirt up so that somebody can walk uh, even when it floods up to the drive and up to the house using this as an area. So the path itself will be raised earth. Uh, there's lots to do. I have a couple of flat tires that I need to pull off today. I couldn't get them back on the bead. Um, so I'll pull them off, take them to town. There's lots to do. It is the weekend. I'm going to put you on stop motion because it's high wind and that's super high to do my video, super hard to do my video in high wind. So this actually uh, worked out really, really well. I was originally uh, worried that the uh, cedar and the uh, old uh, plywood would not come off of this concrete, but it came off really, really well. So overall, I'm, I'm super pleased with the design. So uh, I just put everything together with just simple drywall screws. There was nothing special going on there. So uh, those straps had kept the post straight the entire time. So off they go. It's kind of fun to watch this thing be reborn, you know, and, and um, 
I, I really, <laughs> this is the most fun. Uh, there was a couple of days of rain. There I moved around to the other side. There's a couple of days of cold and rain in between. So this is three days old. I didn't do any uh, outdoor work yesterday. I did other work instead. Uh, once I get the uh, the plywood off and the cedar off, then I break loose the molding um, of the uh, the sheet metal, and it came off really, really well. Underneath there, I need to get underneath the bridge and wait underneath there and unscrew where I had wrapped it around the Da Vinci post, the long post, and then I had stuffed it with uh, old stones and spray foam as well as pumice stone. So uh, there we go. So it came off. I didn't vibrate the, the mud down. These, these were just dumped one after the other after the other. If you watch my videos, uh, Scott came out and helped me do this work. But um, this mold, it worked, worked really, really well. I wish I would have caught some of those uh, spray foam. I'm not worried about them structurally, but those little bits of spray foam in there, I would have peeled those out before I poured, and then I would have had even a tighter uh, see, seal for the uh, uh, concrete. Uh, anyway, I didn't vibrate it down. I'm not too worried about all that. Because all right. Well, I've got it all off. Let's go ahead and go under and take a look at the coyote fence that has the lava stone on it. See if it's uh, rough enough and good enough to be a ceiling, right? Like visually up, uh, you know, 10, 12, 14 feet ceiling. So I'm going to hold on to the camera while I wade in. <laughs> so if I drop you in the water, apologies. I hope not. <laughs> let's, for the drama's sake, let's get me on here. Now I did put steps on this. Uh, these earth bags have got have steps. So all right. So I'm down. My uh, <laughs> Amazon waiters are doing okay. I haven't got a leak yet. It's rough too. There's a lot of sharp edges, so I guess these are good waiters. All right, let's go underneath. All right, so here we are. We're underneath there. So uh, let's take a look together. Well, if you were down, you know, on the bottom of a floor and you looked up, that's not ugly. Right, that's rugged and rough. Look there where I stuffed the stones in the crack. Well, that looks pretty good. So my goal here with this bridge, of course, I'll get rid of this foam, uh, expanding foam. I put it in there anywhere that there, oh look, that, that one's holding this whole stone. <laughs> I uh, put the uh, expanding foam to keep the cement, of course, from falling out. I'm not worried about what I'm dropping in the pond. The wind will blow it all into one bank and then I'll clean it up. I do not leave trash on this farm. Uh, it bothers me. So, you know, what's the point of having an organic farm if it's all filled up with, you know, trash? Well, I'm working at it. How about that? I'm working on it. Uh, so, but yeah, I spend a good deal of time cleaning up. So anyway, if you were 20 feet below, you know, I'll get you as far down as I can before I put you in water. And then you're looking up at a ceiling. Now these, when I do put them up, I've decided I don't want little bits and pieces of stuff falling on me forever. So I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, do the clean these better with a wire wheel. Get the, uh, to get the cedar perfectly clean, which I have in the past. Uh, this bridge was just the roughest state I could make a bridge. Now let's take a look at the... The bridge itself, will it last a thousand years? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I wrapped the concrete around the cedar. I'm gonna go back over it with, um, I'm gonna go back over it with, uh, you know, white. Look how thick that girder is, right? That cement girder, and it goes down to the post on all sides. So I think it'll uh, last a thousand years. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap that with uh, white stucco or white mortar, as white as I can get it. So uh, this rough surface, this rough texture, I'm good with it because I'm gonna end up uh, mortar coating it. Now, the winter's coming and I don't know how long it takes before uh, I can coat a green concrete. This was poured three days ago. So three days ago, in any place where there's a void, I could have been a little more careful with the spray foam, 
but that's not going to cause a stru structural collapse. I've got six inches of concrete weighing against it, a, ca a cap. I've got all of those cedar fence. It it's not going anywhere. Those little voids, no, they're on a pedestrian bridge. And really, realistically, if I had poured this for just farm traffic over a, a culvert, I'd be fine with that too. It wouldn't bother me at all. Three inches of high strength concrete there. Two inches, inch and a half up at the top. Still got a little crookedness to it. I'm hoping to take that last bit of crookedness out when I um, uh, put white mortar on there or stucco. And then the post I'm going to clean up right now. I'm going to cut the tops, prep those for paint, and uh, get them all even so that it looks good. All right. Take a look at the, uh, the molds. I didn't use any mold release at all. I just used cedar pickets. They came right off. They didn't stick. And then over here, this is flashing of some kind. I, I pulled it out of a, if you watch my videos, I pulled it out of a dump. It was crushed in a tornado. I do know that. And all mangled up. So it was good for me to beat it out, make it straight again, and use it for those. That looks pretty good. really does. Uh, I'm thrilled. Uh, if I get time today, I'm going to run to town and I'm going to get, I, I just need Portland cement. That's all I need for those test spots. My perlite came in, so I've got enough perlite to do testing. And I'll do a one to one, a two to one, and a three to one ratio. I think three to one will be too soft. Once they rot out, I'll chisel them out and pour something in. But I'm interested to see how rugged uh, perlite is or if I'll have to overcoat it with something. Oh, man, that, that looks pretty good, everybody. I'm, you know, for a do it yourself concrete bridge, pedestrian bridge, and it's, it's not done, it's just all in the rough. But um, the charm of it's beginning to come out. I almost tore the frames down several times because I was so disappointed in how it was turning out. But I thought, well, you know, don't judge a book by the cover. Do it all the way. And uh, it's still not done. Each one of these sections that are a test section, this is a different mix, then that is a different mix, and that is a different mix, and that is a different mix. These will all be covered over with uh, one skim coat of stucco in white. The post will be red and then I'll think this will be real good oh I did see one failure uh, of the hyper adobe as a dam abutment as the uh, clay swelled it put a crack down the mortar on the back side you can't see it but I can I'll patch that too I'll hopefully get time to mortar that we'll see all right everybody thank you for watching me remove the forms from my concrete bridge i think you'll all agree that you know that's a very nice little uh pedestrian bridge it's not even done uh but i i'll put the tops on it today and that way if the winter storms and ice come in i won't have an eyesore the one thing i do hope i can do before the freeze is uh mud that part so that it looks a little like that and maybe the tops but uh I'm not going to kill myself. I think I'm about 70 hours away from massive winter storms. It, it could get too cold. Once you hit 40 degrees, you don't want to mud at, all, mud at all because the mud is a crystalline structure that uses water and converts it into a crystalline structure with the uh, limestone. So when it gets too cold, then that uh, conversion process is slowed way down. And then if it freezes, the freezing breaks your structure and you end up with much weaker concrete that just flakes apart I don't want that nor do I want that on a stucco so well I'm trying to build a test bed that's perhaps the most marginal test case possible I don't want to build what I know is a failure right like you know I want it to wear and tear faster than the roof so I know as this wears so goes my roof and give me like a two-year head start so I could plan to fix the roof but um in this particular case, it's looking good. Like, subscribe, follow me along. I think that could last a thousand years because I would just overcoat it every, you know, hundred years when it starts getting a little flaky. When the cedar rots out, I would put in stainless steel or cast iron post. Uh, you know, there's a lot that could be done there. Uh, anyway, like, subscribe, follow me along. Thank you. Bye.